This is section 9.2 continued. So we had example four, find the sum of the convergent series. So what we need to do is, um, we kind of want to follow the same pattern that happened in example three. But in order to do that, that means we'll have to come up with two fractions like they had in example three. And which means we'll need to come up with like one fraction and then plus or minus, I don't know what the sign would be, and another fraction, okay? Typically we want a minus here so that that way the same kind of thing happened in the last example where items are canceling or reducing. Now we know how to break up one fraction into two fractions, okay? The first thing we wanna do is we want to factor this um, here. So I'm gonna try five in and three and five in and two. I don't know that this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try it and see if I get an answer. So this would make 10, this would make 15. In order for me to get negative five, the 15 would have to be negative and the 10 would have to be positive. So then this would be five in minus three and five in plus two. And we have a way to um, get this numerator and this denominator. It's called the partial fractions. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take six over these two denominators and solve this equation, which will result in a system of equations that we can solve for A and B. So if I multiply by the common denominator to each fraction, I'll end up with six equal to five in A plus two A and plus five in B minus three B. And if I take the coefficients of n as one set of equations, there's no n's here, so zero equals um, five a plus five b. And then the constants together, so I get two a minus three b. And then if I solve this system using the um, addition or elimination method, um, I will get, let's see, I will multiply this fraction by negative 2a and I'll multiply this fraction by um, 5, no not a, just negative 2 and by 5 so that these will both end up being 10s but with opposite signs. So this will lead me to 0 still, negative 10a, negative 10b, and then 30, 10a minus 15b. Now, instead of multiplying by a negative 2, I could have multiplied this one by 5 and this one by positive 3 because these already had opposite signs. It doesn't matter which one you choose to eliminate as long as you eliminate one of the variables. So here I end up with um, 30 equal to negative 25b, which means that b equals 30 over negative 25 or if I simplify that, negative six over five. Then I can use this response and plug it back into one of these equations to find out what b is. So since this b is being multiplied by five, I'm gonna use it because that'll get rid of my fraction. So five a plus five times this would just be negative six. And then if I add six to both sides, I get this. And if I divide by five on both sides, I get that a equals positive six fifths. So my um, my summation there, my um, series will become six fifths over five in minus three plus or minus actually minus six fifths over five in plus two. Now I can factor out that six fifths and factor it completely out of the series so that I just have six fifths times this series. Okay, so that I'm only looking at this when it comes to um, plugging in all the values. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, start finding SN. 
So Sn is going to be for n equal to one. So I am gonna have a six fifths because a six fifths applies to every single term. It's multiplied by every single term. So I'm gonna put the six fifths on the outside. And for the first term, I'm gonna plug in one. So when I plug in one here, I'm gonna get five minus three, which is two. And I don't wanna write this big because I am gonna to have to fit a lot in this line. Let me just clean that up a little bit. And then when I plug in one here, I'm gonna get five plus one, which is seven. And then I'm gonna add what I get when n equals two. So here, if I plug in two, I'm gonna get 10 minus three, which is one seventh. And there is a minus sign in between there. Minus, when I plug in two, I get 12. If I keep going, n equal to three, that would be 15 minus 3, which is 12. And then 15 plus 2, which is uh, 17. And then I could keep going, but I want to jump into the second to last term and then the nth term. So the second to last term, when n, this n equals n minus 1. I don't even need to do that. Just I could just jump straight to the very last term, n. Okay, when n equals n. So when I get that, I'm gonna get one over five n minus three minus one over five n plus two. And so notice this negative one sevenths cancels with the positive one sevenths after it. Negative one half cancels with the positive one half after it. This negative one sevenths will cancel with the positive one sevenths afterward. And this positive um, fraction will cancel with a negative one before it. So what I'm left with is six fifths times one half minus one over five n plus two. And so then if I take the limit of this um, series here, we'll see what we end up with. Oops, I'm writing the wrong values in the wrong places. You have to be very careful. This happens all the time to everyone, even the best of them. So you just have to make sure you catch it so you can correct it. So this fraction will go to zero because the denominator will get increasingly bigger going to infinity, causing the fraction itself to get smaller and smaller and smaller closer to zero. So what I end up with is six fifths times one half which is three fifths. So we do get a limit and we get that limit is three halves. So this is the sum, remember? Once you find that limit, that is the sum. And we knew we were going to get a sum because they told us from the very beginning that the series does converge. We just was a matter of manipulating what we had so that we could find that S.